we were uh, discussing about yes now i can hear you. <laughs> we were discussing about uh, some of the the things why apis for example and, and digitalization is not moving for example in traffic and and other sectors so fast as it could and some of the reasons were actually the societal changes because uh, there is a political impact for example if if you start automating for example ships uh, mooring into the ports and then that reduces people that are needed to do that job. So of course, that is something we should always consider when talking about tech. And I'm sure that in your talk, you will also touch the, the topic. <laughs> but um, please share your slides and you're you're welcome to take it away, Hanna. And Hanna is from Tieke and will introduce herself and what is Tieke in a short moment. Let's see that everything works. Yes, I will leave you on that. It's not working well. Hey, yeah. well, pleasure to be part of the API days again and very important uh, topic just discussed before my, my uh, presentation. So happy to hear that the, the work that actually I was also uh, in that meeting in, in Paris, but unfortunately I cannot take credit for any work after that on, on this topic just by trying to uh, show my own example and, and, uh, and uh, as a woman be active in the community and I think one thing it was just before I get started introducing myself just on the topic that it's really important to empower uh, the minorities, whether it's women or, or uh, people with other backgrounds in this community. But it's also very important to all of us to keep in mind the, the, our approach and attitude and how uh, eagerly we are listening to different points of views from people who come from a different background than us. And I was actually in... in uh, in the API Stat and Strategy Conference, I believe, in, in Portland some years ago. And I was really actually touched by the their uh, like ambitious level of safe space for everybody and how, how they kicked off the meeting by setting the boundaries for <laughs> like acceptable behavior there straight to everybody. So I, I was really convinced by that. And, and I will believe and hope that we can all uh, do our best to make events inclusive to all of us. Um, so back to uh, the, my topic today is our society set for the data and platform economy. Uh, I will tell a bit about uh, TIEKE, the Finnish Information Society Development Center, which I'm leading currently, and then uh, about my uh, journey on this topic, as well as the, the things that we should, uh, in my opinion, uh, pay attention to while advancing and making sure that we can smoothly advance with digitalization like Mariukka, and apparently the community has been calling for yesterday. Just briefly about myself. So I, I moved to Tieke to work as an executive director since last uh, December. And before that, I have ever since 2009 been working on getting data opened and used uh, in Forum Virum Helsinki, the city of Helsinki's innovation company for eight years. And then before that in Finnish Meteorological Institute on climate change mitigation and adaptation related data and getting that more widely used in the society. I've been working on digital media from different roles quite a while already. And at TIEKE, the Finnish Information Society Development Center, our mission is to build a digitally competent and interoperable information society. And um, we are actually turning 40 next year. So TIEKE has even longer history on these topics than myself. But we are really uh, independent non-profit. Uh, we have eight people working at uh, in Tieke uh, on different aspects of uh, digital societies, information societies. Uh, we can kind of roughly uh, split our work on two, two different aspects. One side is the business services, uh, where we are helping companies and organizations in general utilize digital, digital technologies and advance with the interoperability as well. Uh, we arrange there different kind of forums. We work as kind of this bridge builder between different uh, stakeholders, whether they are public or private or citizens or research institutions, and bring them together and kind of clear, create this joint vision, shared vision, uh, so that we can advance more smoothly with uh, digitalization and using information and data widely in the society for the benefit of the citizens, as well as more and more growingly to the environment. 
And then on the other hand, we are there to uh, already long time ensuring the, that everybody would have the digital skills needed so that they can actually navigate in the information society and leverage different technologies. We've had this computer driver's license already for some decades. And now we are, of course, more and more looking into how do we equip people with the adequate skills so that they can not just use technology, but work uh, aside or in comp like accompanied by technology, robotics and, and so forth in the future. Uh, on interoperability, one of the things that maybe many of the listeners, at least the Finnish ones, uh, know us from is this verkkolaskuosoitteesto, so the e-invoice uh, address registry, which is this database for uh, uh, e-invoice addresses of businesses. And it's meant for uh, sending uh, e-invoices between organizations. And actually, I'm happy to tell that it's uh, this autumn we are taking over Sweden, so this in, uh, in innovation is now going to be serving the Swedish uh, companies and organizations as well. Uh, like I mentioned, we have different kind of forums. So one of them is this AI and Big Data Forum Finland. Uh, we offer these business services. We have a messaging service where you can go and fetch uh, the standardized messaging uh, formats and, and uh, the specifications regarding those. And we have also uh, to make uh, <laughs> buying ICT services easier for uh, businesses and organize other organizations, we offer these contract templates. And on the e-skills, uh, digital skills side, we have the examinations are running and further developed constantly. And we have different kind of ways to make your skills visible. One of the newest comers is this open batches, which is a way to kind of uh, uh, recognize uh, skills that you have acquired through uh, different kind of activities, whether participating in an event like this or taking a course, for example. But the question of the talk is that is our society set for the data and platform economy? And like I mentioned, I will now uh, kind of uh, walk through the like uh, the developments that I have witnessed myself, and then some of the uh, areas that still need work. I think for us to all to really benefit, benefit um, or for the society at large to benefit from these technologies. So uh, we have been working hard to get data opened or in other ways shared and, and or even uh, available through consent. But I think one thing that we have seen in many, uh, many cities who have worked hard with, uh, with open data that the machine readable is not enough. We have to make it understandable by humans as well. And we need to have more skills and make it easier and tools also for people to utilize data. There's great examples from New York, for example, how they really, really uh, feel that it's not the access <laughs> access is uh, to the information is one step, but the next step is to really have the skills and data literacy to make something out of that data, make your own interpretations, and uh, and start using the data for for your purposes. Uh, but like said, of course, developers are often in the in the sphere of data, the ones who actually draft something meaningful out of out of the data as a resource. And we actually in 2012, uh, when I was still working for Forum Virum Helsinki, launched the Helsinki Loves Developers developer engagement activities and developed these models where you can bring into the same table these uh, skilled, highly skilled. Uh, developers and then the data owners and even citizens or other interest groups to ideate together uh, what kind of uh, solutions and tools applications you can build on top of that data and uh, there's already uh, hundreds of uh, application examples for example in the Helsinki regions uh, open data portal Helsinki region info share that you can see and check what kind of use cases they have come up with but one question quite soon came is that how how do you then actually make business out of those uh, that those great applications that developers have developed? Of course, in some cases there is no business interest, but you still should find some kind of sustainable model to keep up those great services so that citizens can benefit them also in the long run. And we worked with six largest Finnish cities on this, so we we created different kind of uh, models and and, and uh, trainings. Uh, support kind of uh, support services for the companies so that they can really 
uh, start uh, using the data for their business. And this meant not just those who are in the ICT developing uh, applications, but also those companies like hairdressers or, or companies who do, uh, um, for example, different kind of uh, real estate companies who can use the use this public data for for their business, also in other other parts of their business processes than than in application end user applications. So check out those if if you you want to learn more about the topics at hand. So we created this. Uh, kind of guidebooks, easy to understand and, and uh, easily understandable guidebooks for the decision makers in companies and in the public sector so that they would advance with uh, either opening up their data and providing APIs or then uh, learning and finding how they can benefit from the data themselves. One aspect in, this, uh, in the city context as well as in the society at large is that uh, we've seen great examples of APIs being used for enabling interaction between different uh, players. One example is this Open 311, the issue reporting API standard uh, that has been widely used in the US. And we have been working with seven European cities on this in Europe as well. So it's been nice to see that how the citizens can really be the eyes and ears of the city, noticing uh, fallen uh, traffic signs or or potholes and so forth, and reporting them easily with the application of their choice uh, using this API as an enabler for uh, passing the information and, on the other hand, fetching the status of, of how their uh, report is being handled in the city. And now even more the APIs can enable. We've seen a lot of, uh, of IoT platforms in smart cities where, where you can have an open uh, API for data input as well from uh, I, uh, sensors, air quality sensors, for example, and so forth, or uh, measuring noise in Barcelona and uh, kind of bringing these worries or, or, or things that are bothering people in the city uh, more clear to the decision makers. And the decision makers, of course, have their uh, official data sources, but they can use this, uh, this uh, collected data, uh, crowdsourced data, uh, to kind of um, get more into details in how certain uh, phenomena is uh, actually what's the impact in, in a more uh, uh, detailed in, uh, in certain locations in the city, for example. Uh, of course, that kind of cases where citizens start gathering data uh, for the city, there's also a need for managing the consent. So who can use this data, who is it meant for and so forth. Uh, GDPR has brought, of course, uh, some uh, uh, solutions to this and, and some uh, rights back to, the, to all of us as citizens and, and uh, users of different services. But what uh, has been already for years now been pushed first from Finland and now uh, pushed as a global organization, uh, the My Data movement is really aiming at having citizens have the say, have their say on who can use their data and for which purpose. And uh, I think this uh, is probably quite well known already already now, but it's really uh, it's the idea is to get data used more, but still have the individual in the control of of where and how. And uh, it can be applied to all different sectors. Uh, I don't go so much into details because I noticed there's a lot of uh, Finnish participants who have been probably hearing hearing a lot more about the my data approach. So the human-centric approach to personal data, but it can really bring benefits, not just for the individuals by uh, putting them in charge, but also for companies who can have an actual mechanism of uh, getting consent from the, from the citizens. And then at the same time, the society can benefit. We can have more uh, uh, health data, for example, for uh, research purposes, or uh, we can uh, leverage the energy consumption data for uh, uh, measuring how well our climate uh, targets are being met and so forth. So there's many benefits from this approach. And there has been a, a claim that this kind of approach, human-centric approach, could also be uh, fixed to this uh, kind of broken data economy, which is just benefiting the big players and not necessarily uh, society at large or or the users themselves. And uh, I we at Dieke believe that uh, we really should build trust on this 
So uh, there's uh, Citra. It's a bit uh, bad slide. I'm sorry, but there's already uh, interesting work done by the Lisbon Council together with Citra on, on what would be the roadmap for a fair data economy. Uh, the Citra also made a working paper on on proposals how to make the European stra uh, data strategy work better. And there's been work on these kind of uh, data sharing principles that uh, Citra has been, the Finnish Innovation Fund Citra has been uh, uh, funding. So there's a lot of things happening happening in this domain as well. And these cases were, of course, more, more about how the humans are, are using our data and how, how they can contribute in this. But I think uh, we need, in addition to the human-centric approach, this automation or robotics or AI-centric approach to data as well, so that we can uh, better tackle the needs, needs coming from, from that direction. And, uh, and then while, while serving the, the, the technology and, and the needs coming from there, we need to put more effort on, on uh, making this machine readable, human usable. Data literacy, which I mentioned, is something very, very important. But at the same time, we should have better platforms, tools, uh, easy to use solutions so that you can at least uh, uh, get some idea of different phenomena and, and understand how things work uh, through easy to use visualization tools, for example. And I've been, we've been seeing, of course, a trend on these. So there are growing number of solutions out there already. But the skills uh, is something we are looking at. So before it was kind of clear that there were these skills to use the machine, use the computer. How do you drive the computer? Now it's becoming more and more about how you uh, make sense of, of information you're receiving. How do you evaluate uh, the, the <laughs> how tr uh, true the, are these facts true or not and so forth. Uh, there, so there's a lot, lot, uh, a lot of different kind of needs rising from from the develop all <laughs> continuously developing technology, and uh, some questions like if if you look at the automation at homes, for example, it can, uh, I mean, they can create quite big uh, security risks and also risks in in in, uh, in safety at at large in society. So I think we need to <laughs> start equipping ourselves and our organizations better for, for the constantly changing technology landscape. Uh, there are some uh, examples already. I think we've been kind of uh, benchmarking the data literacy and data skills related uh, existing uh, training materials, which there are quite, quite a good number already out, uh, openly licensed ones. So uh, coming from Finland, we need to see how we can better localize them here and, and uh, make sure that we in Finland and in Europe at large are, are ready for, for uh, getting most out of data. And here is a bit uh, <laughs> uh, kind of where, where we are aiming at with the value creation. So if we start from the data and, and making, making it more easily accessible through APIs and discovery services and so forth and start uh, uh, providing the developers, developer uh, uh, events and tools and so forth. And then we start ensuring the, uh, the skills and uh, awareness about the, the possibilities these technologies and data provide to them and, and even serve, uh, utilize, utilize this uh, data and APIs better in, in the digital services that uh, public sector society at large is uh, offering. We believe that then we can start really the benefits so we can start improving the quality of life we can improve well-being of our citizens. Uh, we can have uh, remarkable emission cuts. Uh, we can strengthen communities and ensure openness, inclusion, uh, transparency, uh, all these important things in the information society. So these technologies are, of course, just an enabler, but a very important one uh, so that we can reach these, uh, create the value and, and uh, reach these goals that we as a well-functioning well information society want to see. So still a recap on, on that. What <laughs> do we have the needed infrastructure for information society? Uh, so we are really working hard and I believe many of us here are in this event working on getting data moving and used 
whether it's through opening it, whether it's through consent management mechanisms, whether it's through co contract frameworks or even new services. And uh, we need to remember that we have uh, all our citizens that they can use as data collectors too. Uh, interoperability in general uh, and discovery of data and APIs, I think that's something that really uh, calls for more work so that we can actually have scalable services. Uh, collaboration is a key, I think it was a bit mentioned uh, when Mario, Mario was uh, introducing me that uh, I think we need to uh, be able to uh, not just focus on different specific sectors and, and solve things there, but look at like how these things impact the society and and different players and work, work in ecosystems. And take the leverage, the benefits that, for example, APIs bring to creating work well functioning ecosystems and identifying all, each of our role in that ecosystem. I think that's something that is really important in the in the long run. And uh, that's also this consent management, for example, it brings new roles into data ecosystem. So which is it smart to go for all those roles or trying to be everything for your customers or is it better to uh, specialize in one part and one role in, in that ecosystem and still uh, make a successful business out of that. Uh, from the information society point of view, digital identity and this different kind of uh, different uh, level of uh, security and identification, there needs to be a, a better selection of uh, solutions and, and, um, and we need to have organizations IT companies, businesses more aware of the, 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 the offering that is out there so that everybody can utilize the identification services that are most best fit for their purposes. Uh, we need focus on developer experience that Jarko has been, of course, promoting uh, amongst many, but then also the user experience for the citizens and, and other stakeholders who can utilize the data. And then the important thing when, when aiming for, for this uh, human-centric, uh, competitive, interoperable uh, information society, I think ethics and shared values is something that is needing a lot more work in this platform. Uh, economy and data economy. So how do we uh, tackle the biases? How do we uh, make sure that there's traceability of, of data sources being used and transparency? Because when we are advancing, I mean, they are already now <laughs> causing just with us humans sometimes problems. But when we are advancing with the algorithm based uh, decision making and other supported automated uh, or predictive uh, actions in, in smart cities and information societies, I think we will have many cases where where we need to come back to the, <laughs> the are we in line on the ethics and values side or not. So uh, just to conclude, a lot of work to <laughs> remains to all of us still. Uh, and uh, we are busy looking. I mean, one of our uh, main ways of working on these topics is through projects. So uh, all the topics that I mentioned in, in the talk, we are really eager to partner up, especially for the upcoming Digital Europe program that starts, uh, the funding program that starts early next year. So let's be in touch and find ways to work together on these topics. Thank you. All righty, Hannah, thank you very much for that very interesting uh, presentation. And uh, I'd also like to extend my personal thanks as well, because having moved to Helsinki around about two years ago now, I found that I haven't had so many of these you know, paper forms that come through the post. And the first thing they ask is, you know, what's your name and address? I, I hate that. You know, one of the things I found, you know, living in Helsinki is that, uh, you know, there's a lot of things digitally. You get your social security number uh, and then things happen, right? You know, you can open bank accounts. You can do a lot of things, um, you know, with the, the e-banking uh, and the numbers that you control as well. You know, it all works very smoothly. And, you know, in comparison to the other countries I've lived in more recently in Central Europe, uh, it, it, there's a lot of form filling and, and they don't really have that level of sophistication that I'm seeing here in Finland. So, well, thank you for that. <laughs> well, that's good to hear. But we have still a lot of work to do as well.
it, there's always work to do, you know, get to that sort of, you know, Star Trek next generations level <laughs> where everything is, you know, perfect. So we keep moving forward. Um, cool. I, I also noticed that uh, you mentioned this uh, dev.hell.fi. I'm going to yeah. go and check that out later as well. Is, is that like a, a classic um, developer portal? Can I go there and get access to the APIs and uh, onboard kind of stuff? Yes, that's a developer portal. It was very much inspired. That was also launched in 2012. I have actually, as a warning, I haven't gone there now <laughs> to check in which, uh, which, uh, in how good shape it is. But there's a, okay. there's a, all the documentation and there's some reference uh, implementations and there's actually a Gitter that you can reach because the city uh, already, I think, seven years ago started again hiring their own uh, developers. So uh, you can then reach out and consult with them, with the experts who have created these APIs, so they will help you help you out. Okay, so that, that's really cool. It's like a concierge service from, from the developer themselves <laughs> yeah. as well. Yes. All right, not bad, not bad. You don't see that very often, so that's pretty cool. I'll, I'll go and take a look at that. Um, cool, yeah. Um, well, I, I think we're uh, I think we're, we're we're done here. Thank okay. you very much for for your time. I think Thank we'll you. uh, 